G'day guys, we're here answering your questions. Today we're dealing with all the hype that you might be seeing, particularly in the national outlets, things like your online news media sites, things like your national papers. Should you believe the hype? And what I'm gonna tell you today is gonna to blow your mind. In particular, what we've also got tonight is we've got some great news. I know we've got a number of Perth followers, obviously I originated in Perth, our head office is in Perth, and particularly those of you who have actually got property uh, in Perth or are looking to get into the Perth market, got some great news coming up. But let me get into it and let me introduce myself. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Tim Guest. I'm Australia's leading financial educator and the managing director of Infinite Wealth. Um, guys, we love doing these uh, with these live broadcasts. If you've been a long time follower, welcome back. If you're new, hey, it's great to meet you. We hope you stick around. Um, also, we love to see your interaction with these videos. So please comment, um, ask questions, like, love, angries, of course. And particularly after what I'm gonna go through tonight, share, share, share. People need to know this stuff, particularly what's been dominating, uh, dominating the media narrative out there. So like I said, the question that we're gonna be dealing with tonight, in fact, it's a question that came in during the week from Rebecca from Victoria. She's saying, hey Tim, I wanna buy an investment property, but I keep reading in the news that there's Australian house price is gonna be crashing. And essentially what she was asking me, look, should I be believing the hype or not? Okay, look, guys, one of the things that you gotta know, you wanna be a successful investor, the first thing you need to understand is you gotta stop reading newspapers. Okay, keep in mind that primarily our news media is centralized, primarily in Sydney. There's also a fair bit of it in Melbourne as well. Not only that, particularly nowadays, considering that journalism has been so, I guess, um, uh, uh, torn away by things like social media, by the internet. Now, everyone's got an opinion. Everyone can get their opinion out there. Um, and these media companies are becoming less and less profitable. What we're seeing is more and more what we used to consider credible news agencies just doing sensationalist stories like the one we talked about uh, going back a few weeks ago, 60 Minutes. I mean, what um, the most some of the most irresponsible journalism I've seen in a while. Okay, so primarily what we're seeing is these news media, media sites or uh, putting out uh, articles that are gonna grab your attention, it's sensationalist, they're gonna want you to click on that. Um, and of course, you know, you gotta remember these news media, their real customer is not you, their real customer is their advertiser. They just wanna get as many likes and looks and views on their pages so that they can continue to charge as much as possible for advertising and keep their businesses running. So let's talk about particularly these Australian house prices and are they crashing? The reality is, is what we are entering in the Australian house price, and we're really only talking about Sydney and Melbourne because we've seen some great growth in Hobart, we've seen a really strong market in Brisbane, we're seeing a Perth um, recovery. Now, just on the Perth, and I said I'd give you some great news for those of you listening in Perth. Look, you know, you've probably heard me in these videos talk about some of the, the results that we're starting to see coming out of the West Australian economy. Like the West Australian economy has um, been re uh, returned by Standard and Poor's to a much higher credit rating. Uh, we've seen um, the highest, uh, or sorry, the fastest growing jobs market in Western Australia that we've seen for the past 25 uh, years. We're seeing a really tight vacancy rates. The vacancies over the past uh, few months have halved in Perth. Okay, we're seeing FIFO remuneration has jumped according to SEEK by 35% in the last 12 months. We're seeing population growth return to the levels of 2011, 2012. Okay, and as been reported by Rewa over the last couple of days, we've seen the first uptick in the Perth house price, 1% growth in the Australian median, uh, so not Australian, sorry, Perth median house price growth in the month of October. So once again, we're really starting to see those fundamentals that underpin a recovery actually start to come fruition. It's starting to show. Um, and look, you know, we've actually seen in the, the million dollar suburbs out of the, the, I think it's the 14 million dollar suburbs in Western Australia, or in Perth, I should say, 13 of them have produced growth over the last 12 months. You always see that the top end of um, a market move first. So really, really strong signs for Perth. Okay, so keep in mind this news media stuff, it really is just talking about the Sydney and the Melbourne market. And we've got to keep this in perspective. If we look over the last 10 years, okay, Sydney has grown by 105%, it's more than doubled. Melbourne has grown by 95%. So to actually see that coming off the top of the market, like we see every cycle. Now keep in mind, we're midway through a cycle. We've seen probably around about the first 10 years of a cycle move. So really all we're entering now is that the mid cycle slowdown. And what I'm predicting is certainly what, and I'm gonna talk about the RBA and what they've come out and said over the last couple of days with their, uh, their monetary statement on Tuesday when they um, announced the uh, any move and there was obviously no 
change in interest rates. And you're going to see that this really does support and underpin the fact that all we're going to see is a standard slowdown, which normally sees house prices come off the peak by around about 10 to 12 percent. Now, keep in mind, a lot of the time people get confused. I'm not talking about 10 to 12 percent per annum. A lot of the time we talk about growth in a per annum basis. I'm talking about just 10 to 12 percent off the peak. It's probably going to happen over a few years. In fact, what we're probably seeing is uh, the Sydney market's probably around about halfway through its downturn already, with Melbourne really just entering it. Um, you know, we're seeing the, the, the top end of Melbourne has already de uh, is starting to decline. The middle sort of segment of the Melbourne market is staying pretty stagnant at the moment. And we've actually seen some incredible growth over the Melbourne market over the last 12 months. Epping, okay, one of the standout performers, an area that we've been recommending to our clients. We saw 22% per annum growth over the last 12 months. So if you're interested in getting that kind of growth, you might definitely want to think about becoming a client. But let's talk about the RBA statement and particularly some of the statistics that I'm pin what I'm talking about. I know for some of you, you might think this is a little bit boring when I would keep it short, I'm gonna keep it sharp and really easy to understand. So here's what the RBA came out and said, and I've got a few notes here, right? So ultimately, RBA is a great source to see how things are going. They're not a news media site, they're not out about sensationalist headlines or anything along those lines. The RBA never panic, they're always quite calm and delivered in their approach. Here's what they say, the Australian economy continues to perform, okay, and perform well. It's expecting that we're gonna see, and in fact, they've revised their growth um, uh, projections for the Australian economy up over the next two years. So it's gonna continue to grow over the next two years. Unemployment is at 5%. That's the lowest level that we've had unemployment over the past six years here in Australia. And it's gonna expect over the next two years, unemployment is gonna to continue to decline. At the same time, we've already seen a marginal uptip in wages growth, okay? Obviously, as the employment rate, unemployment rate comes down, it puts more pressure on wages, and we start to see that wage growth start to tick over, okay? It's, it's pretty normal for this cycle, but obviously, we've been talking, uh, we've, you've probably heard a lot of talk about wage growth. We're gonna to start to see that wage growth tick up. Now, a lot of the time, we do hear a lot of these news media sites talk about how Australia has got, you know, record high debt levels. The thing they would never talk about because it would ruin their story is the fact that we always have, we also have the highest asset values that we've had um, and we have recent stats that came out by Credit Suisse just last week uh, Australia is Australians are actually the wealthiest people in the world okay as an individual wealth as an average okay so we've now uh, I think knocked off Switzerland I think it was Switzerland we've knocked off Switzerland to be the, the, the wealthiest um, people in the world all right now, a couple of things that are leading to what they call the housing market e easing, particularly in those two major markets, is obviously we've seen tightened lending standards over the last several years, okay? Now, it's gotten particularly tight since the, the, the Banking Royal Commission. However, because the banks have been tightening those policies, they've also been increasing their capital reserves. It means that borrowers are actually in quite a strong position. Okay, the, there's been a significant reduction in the number of high LVR loans, so the, the effective high is loan to value ratio. So most loans actually have quite a significant amount of equity or deposit in them. In fact, the average, and this has got a lot to do with the growth that's been seen over the past few years as well, particularly in those Melbourne and Sydney markets, the average LVR is just about 50%. Okay, that means that the average mortgage holder has paid off effectively half their, or only owes half of what their house is worth, which means people have got a significant amount of buffer to allow for moving into some kind of downturn. To really see a crash brought on, what we're gonna need to see is we're gonna need to see high unemployment rates, okay? People being unable to pay their mortgages and then at the same time, not having the buffer and the equity underneath them. Now. At the moment, the average mortgage holder in Australia is three years ahead on its mortgage, okay? And once again, this is what's leading to the very low delinquency rate that we're seeing in the country at the moment. It's around about 1% in terms of delinquency rates. That's people that are more than 90 days behind on their mortgage. So really, you can see the stats coming through from the RBA, you know, all this media stuff that we're seeing out there, it's primarily hype, and look, they're always gonna spin the figures to suit the story that they wanna tell. The key that you wanna remember is if you wanna be a successful investor, don't read newspapers, okay? Get your data, get your information from reliable, credible sources. You know, people like the RBA, 
Um, and also there's some probably some people out there, Terry Ryder is someone that I really recommend that you, you follow. Okay, really kind of sorts all the bullshit out from the actual real data and talks about what's really happening. But guys, apart from that, that's all I've got in terms of that question. A couple of things I wanna cover off, so don't go anywhere just yet. You wanna hear this next piece of news, all right? I'm doing my last few events for the year. In fact, the next event that I've got coming up in Melbourne, that is the last time I'm gonna be doing a live event in Melbourne for this year, okay? So if you're meaning to get along, if you wanna find out how to get your money sorted, how to take control, how to get ahead, how avoid to avoid the disaster that is superannuation and pension coming down the line, you wanna get along to check that out. You'll get great value. I promise you, you walk out of the room at the end of the night you'll be so glad that you spent the night with me perth we've got an event coming up on the 20th of november at the uh, perth convention next ambition center so make sure you get along to that there's going to be some um, links in the the post above so that you can secure a couple of free tickets if you want to come and check it out guys like i said want to see your interaction with these posts so please like love angry post your comments post your questions i love getting back to you guys and answering your questions and uh, of course please make sure that you're sharing this information right we want to make sure that people out there are actually seeing what's really happening in the market and not believing all the media spin. Guys, that's all it for me tonight. Have a great night. Have a great weekend. I look forward to catching up with you guys on some more videos next week. Thanks a lot and good night.